Okay, we start now. Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Menna Mustafa. I am a strategy analyst at Boeing and I lead the accelerator and innovation programs at the Meta region, that's Middle East, Turkey and Africa. Um, today, I'm happy to have Abdullah Al-Awani with me. Uh, he's the executive director at Tawazun Economic Council. Uh, he will be talking to us about how Tawazun is driving the UAE tech uh, ecosystem uh, forward. In this session, Abdullah and I will be talking and providing some introductions about the Aerospace Accelerator Program as well as Tawazun Economic Council. Then we will, uh, I will be asking Abdullah uh, uh, so, uh, some of uh, his insights and then we'll head to the live Q&A at 1.30 before we close with our final notes. Um, you can post your questions in the comments section and uh, we will address it during the live session. And if you haven't heard the exciting news yet, applications for cohort four are open. If you are a startup working um, in the digital, uh, on a digital service or a solution, you can head to the link that we will post in the comments uh, to apply now. Uh, with that, I will hand it over to Abdullah for introduction. Thank you, Man. Um, first of all, um, I would like to introduce myself, uh, Abdullah Lawani. Uh, I'm the executive director for the economic uh, program, um, which is the equivalent of the offset program for uh, in, in other countries. Um, our role is basically to, uh, to build partnerships with defense contractors, major defense contractors, and trying to find new solutions and create some kind of program in the UAE. So, uh, so that's that's our role in uh, in Astawazim. However, we'll come to more detail on why are we in this program and how are we thinking about this program uh, as as uh, we will go through the session going forward. Go back to you, man. Thank you, Abdullah. So uh, for those who are not aware, Aerospace Accelerated is a three month uh, accelerator program. Uh, it's open for uh, startups globally uh, that are working on uh, digital, for this cohort is digital solutions and services. Uh, the program uh, offers 100,000 sterling pounds uh, as an investment from the Boeing company. Uh, a curriculum that is customized uh, for each cohort um, and uh, access to Boeing, Tawazan, and all the program partners. Uh, with that, I will uh, start with my questions. And the first one, Abdullah, is what role is Tawazan playing in driving forward the UE tech ecosystem? Sorry, Abdullah, I think you're muted. Okay. So um, to answer this question, I think you need to go back in history, going back to 19, uh, 1992, uh, when the Tawazin Economic Program was created and the Tawazin Economic Council was created. Uh, since then, then uh, the uh, Tawazin be, has been in the center of the economic growth in the UAE, especially in the Emirates of Abu Dhabi. Uh, all of the programs that were uh, uh, managed at that time and developed by the economic program were innovative at that at that time in the 90s. So that DNA is still with Tawazan and we continue to find the new ways as we grow. Uh, we are, we, we do position ourselves as an agile uh, government entity looking at how the ecosystem is changing and we try to align ourselves to how the future is gonna look like. And this is where we see ourselves today is that the, uh, the nature of the development is changing, the economic growth is changing, and more and more the startups and the innovation part of it is playing the major role in it. So we do want to be part of how we can shape that future, support and invest in it and grow it as we can and incubate it. So that's how, how we see ourselves and that's the role that we're gonna to continue to play with you guys as we go forward. Thank you. Um, the next one is why Tawazun uh, has joined the Aerospace Accelerator Program. When, when we started to think about it, as, as mentioned in the previous question, is that we looked around and we saw how can we do it? Um, we don't want to do like a traditional accelerator program where we bring uh, staff and invest in them and just make them sit in a very nice offices and so forth. We wanted to do more an active participation in this kind of program. We wanted to make sure that these startups are looked after and 
as humans, as people trying to find uh, support to their ideas. So the best program that we saw around was, uh, was what Boeing was doing with the Aerospace Accelerator because we saw the human aspect of it. We saw the people, um, I would say, uh, aspect of it because that's what makes uh, the economy grow. It's people, it's ideas of people that they want to go forward. So we saw how, how, you, how the Aerospace Accelerator has been so it's kind of aligning this vision that we have in that area. And uh, what, what we loved about it is that also how uh, agile and how active it is. We saw that kind of uh, connection when we, when we were in London uh, in June and we saw how the community is growing. It's, it's literally, it's a, it's a small community that keeps growing more and more. So we wanna be part of that community and we wanna grow that community with you guys. What's exciting is gonna be the cohort four is that how can we bring that kind of energy to the UAE and the region in general? So, so that's the way, that's why the reason that we joined the, the Aerospace Accelerator. And we're excited to have you as our partner, um, makes us very happy. <laughs> uh, the third question is how do accelerator programs support the ecosystem and boost the economy as a whole? I mean, there's, it's, an, it's, an, it's no secret that what happened in the past uh, two years uh, shaped how people are looking at things. And even all the way from governments, uh, major entities, uh, major player, OEMs, everybody starts to think about the, how fragile our system is in terms of supply chain and terms of things. So they started to see how, and we saw the solution was provided by the small startups and the innovation ecosystem. They were cheaper solutions, faster solutions. Uh, it's easier for companies and startups to, to shift their, their kind of thoughts. Uh, the agility is important in that sense. So we see the importance of such accelerator and uh, playing role in the future more and more. And that's what also the nation of UAE started to see. And us as Tawaz and the government entities we started to see. If we want to build something for the future, I think we need to support and accelerate uh, startups, uh, give those ideas a chance to flourish and develop right and guide, align, support. So that's how we see those kind of programs are helping the, the economy. And eventually in the future, the economic growth will be the end result of all of that. So if you do the right things, and you create the right environment for startups to flourish, I think the ultimate goal definitely will be the economic growth for the nation. Yes, I agree with you. Um, then uh, what are some of the opportunities that the UAE has to offer startups around the world? The UAE is in a unique position, and I think most of the news that you hear about the UAE is how they're planning for the future. The UAE and the region in general is driven by visions, which is 10 years, 15 years from now. Those visions, if you can see the underlying uh, I mean, drivers for it, it's innovation, it's airspace, it's AI, it's technology, it's all of that. The, the UAE is in the incline of, uh, of development. Um, I, we saw how much UAE is spending in terms of, uh, or focusing in terms of uh, AI in terms of education as an uh, institute in the UAE, in terms of R&D institute, in terms of also uh, changing some of the regulations to attract the right startups in the UAE by offering 100% ownership for, for different uh, categories. So that's coupled with the uh, entities like Tawazin and the network that Tawazin have where we can have the uh, investment side of it and we see the networking side of it. That's coupled with that, I think we see uh, there is a lot of offering on the table. There is the other side of it also is the requirement. The region is, is, is hungry for growth. So that kind of growth will always drive uh, requirements. And those requirements can be translated to challenges. Engineers always love challenges. They love to see how we can solve any issues here and there. And the region require a lot of these solutions. So I think all of that can offer the, uh, the startup the right environment to go forward. Uh, the regulations, the regulatory side, the uh, investment side, there's that, those are information that it's always available in the news is how much we are investing in these areas. You can hear every day there is a new investment happening in certain technology and a new company that keeps growing in the UAE or also region. So that's, I think, 
that the the regional and UAE in particular, uh, I would say, uh, support for these kind of uh, uh, startups. Thank you. Um, what is the state of the technical uh, talent in the UAE, and how does the startup ecosystem attract the best talent? These are two questions I mean, in one question. I think that's that's a very good question, and I think we we touched on it in one of the previous one is that. The, and it's all driven by uh, by what happened in the past two years. Uh, we saw how we were able to sustain as, as a nation and we, we maintain the sustainability of what we are doing as an operational and so forth. Uh, with that being said, is that we see the UAE as, uh, as I would say, location-wise, regulatory-wise, and also as an ecosystem, as the right uh, environment for this. And, the government did a lot of, uh, I would say, changes to attract talent by offering either golden visas, uh, forced talents, uh, creating lots of these institutes like the universities, tech and technical institutes. Uh, we have a specific AI university that established two years ago. So, so that kind of uh, environment will attract more talent, of course. Like I said, the golden visa is a very important area where uh, special talents can have their own um, stability in terms of staying and working from the UAE. The 100% ownership also for certain businesses that offer a lot of stability for startups who's thinking to work from the UAE. Uh, Location-wise, uh, that is also important. We are in a cross, close proximity to uh, almost, I would say, uh, couple of billions of talents around us uh, regionally. So all of that gives us a, a unique positioning where we can, we've started to work on it and start to attract more uh, talents in that area. Okay, um, what is uh, the digital, what are the digital transformation trends that you're seeing these days and what is Tawazun most excited about? Okay, so I think definitely it's going to be AI, Internet of Things, and automation. Those are coupled together. I mean, that is very, very interesting area that we see. Uh, it's very hard to visualize how it's going to lead in 10 years from now with the growth, the pace that's happening. We see also that the line is now becoming more blurred between defense, airspace, industry, with those digital uh, capabilities being developed more and more and more. We see more AI working in everything. So AI became the most important thing. It's not the industry, not the platform, not the system. So the digital aspect of things is the most, uh, the most exciting things for us to see and how it can, I wouldn't call it disrupt, but I would say it will uh, drive the, uh, the, uh, the growth tremendously in a way that in a pace that we never saw before. So that's going to be something that we are so excited about. Thank you. Um, I think that the, we finished the questions uh, earlier than uh, where we expected. So uh, I will head to the live uh, Q&A right now. I have a few lined up already. So let me uh, start them. So uh, the first one is, why do you think startups should come to the UAE? What are the biggest benefits of being in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, or the wider region? Abdullah, you're mute again. Yeah, so I think like, uh, like we mentioned, we had touched on it a little bit, but I think we can go in more specific areas by, by explaining how the, the region is becoming uh, more driven by the future rather than the, the past. Uh, with that kind of vision, you will definitely have room to be challenged as a startup to come up with solutions and so forth. The region can offer lots of, of course, investment. That investment side of it is a very important uh, aspect where it can uh, secure for startups the right uh, capital to start the working on their ideas. But that one, one aspect of it, the most important thing is that, I don't know what's the best way to, to, to put it, but it's like the region is becoming like a good playground for technologies to be tested, uh, to be 
uh, shaped and driven to the future. So I don't know if there is a better word for it, but that's the most exciting part for any startup to think about. That, of course, with the, the investment side of it and the networking side of it. Love the description. <laughs> okay, uh, the next one is uh, thinking about setting up in the UAE due to our customer base. How do I even start thinking about this? Does my headquarter have to be there or can I have a subsidiary? Uh, sorry, I think, oh yeah, any things and barriers to look out for? Um, you, so the question is about the barriers or the location of the startup? Which one is it? So it, how, how do I even start? start thinking about um, or setting up a business here in uh, in the UAE and what are the barriers? I think it's a couple of questions, but then okay. the other okay. one is, does my headquarter have to be in the UAE? Not necessarily at all. I mean, again, we believe in ideas. We believe in people with ideas. Um, I think the best way to develop an idea is not to change the environment for that idea. But if a startup looking for they believe that the region is the right, or the UAE is the right place for them to flourish or to grow their, their idea, then why not? We'll support them in that. And like we said, we have a lot of systems to support that in terms of uh, investment, in terms of uh, co-location, in terms of the regulatory side of it. So there is the support system is there. The idea is important for us than the location, because we do believe that those startups need to be international. They need to solve uh, problems for the world, not for the UAE only. And that, that's the aim for this program. It starts maybe from the UAE for some startups who's already here to go outside, or if someone wants to come to the UAE, we are happy to support them in that. Or at the same time, they can stay in their areas and their idea can be uh, shared and developed in the UAE. So it's up to the, to the startup in that sense. So it's not about uh, location and headquarters and so forth. Perfect. And uh, how do you think they can start? You know, where do, where do they start when they want to set up a business? Who do they contact or like how do they go about setting up business there in the UAE? I think it's, it's a very, uh, I would say uh, the answer is very wide because there's so many options. There's so many areas that they can look at. So uh, it's hard for me to pinpoint and say, OK, this is where you need to go, because we have, as you know, maybe Manna, you, you live in the region and you know how how many uh, yeah. accelerators, incubators, uh, programs that we have in the UAE. So it's hard for me to mention one or the other, but again, it's a preference for the startups, how they prefer and where they prefer. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a direction where they need to go for. Right, and, and I think uh, what I would add to this is if, for example, you are uh, the startup is working on a digital solution or service for this cohort. We are uh, we have opened applications, so they can definitely yes. start by contacting Definitely. us. For example, <laughs> yes, uh, but it depends on what type. That, as you said, it's a it's a ge general question. Okay, um, the next one is thanks for the briefing, Abdullah. I am very interested in your recent investment into Cranfield Aerospace Solutions, and as a startup companies. Flux Art working on hydrogen cooled superconducting mot motors. Are you interested in the ability to bolt on investments into new technologies? I think these are two questions, I believe. Uh, investment, definitely, we are open for investment. Uh, of course, most of the investment that we will work with in this cohort is going to be uh, looked at uh, with some kind of evaluation criteria, then we look for it. But technology-wise, definitely we're interested in technologies that's going to be uh, disrupting the, the, the future, creating efficiency, sustainability, and so forth. So specifically, this technology, I'm not the expert in that, but definitely as an investment, yes, we do look at these things and we see uh, if they fit within our strategy and how we're going to go forward. Uh, so the answer is yes, uh, with Definitely some uh, more follow-up questions that we can we can uh, touch on as part of this program as we go forward. Thank you. Okay, the next one is what type of investment for startups are we looking at and do we become part of the offset program? Um, I think the question is that the, uh, the investment is to start with the, with the, uh, the program that uh, Airspace Accelerated is, is looking for. So the first step is to go through the cohort and we go through that kind of selection. So that's the first 
type of investment. Then it goes to what happens next. There might be some right. investment. There might be some other uh, partners in the UAE who are interested more to invest also with that. So we have a network of uh, investors that's also with us that also interested in technologies and interested in growth, interested in future and interested in uh, the ecosystem in the UAE. So we are establishing that kind of network. So the investment could be from us, from the network and we go for a plus. Of course, the networking that we, prefer, we provide by having directly working, for example, if we have a technology of a certain company and we know that there's a company in the UAE require that kind of technology, we can do that kind of connection because we do as Tawazan have uh, a great uh, relation with the, the major OEMs in the UAE. Um, the, last, the last sentence was the question about what, uh, it was about the uh, offset program, yeah. Yes. Uh, for us, part of what we're doing with Boeing is to be part to, to use that kind of offset connection as a program now. That's something that we can look at if we see more mature kind of companies that how we can work that kind of, but it's more complicated than just a direct investment and networking that we can do. Uh, but definitely it's not a no and it's not it's a yes, but with, with certain conditions that needs to be uh, addressed. Perfect, thank you. Okay, next is, could Mr. Abdullah share some examples of startups in which Tawazan has already partnered with? Tawazan, Tawazan, all of the, our life is be startup. All the companies in, we have worked with so many companies that we established as, as Tawazan in the beginning when we were tasked to establish defense companies. But that was like 12, 15 years ago. Uh, at the moment, we do have a specific, uh, I would say, investment fund that uh, works with so many companies. I can't share the, the detail yet. Uh, because those kind of informations always have to be checked before we release them because, but we do work with the ecosystem in Tawaz, when UAE. We work with the investment office of Abu Dhabi, we work with the uh, Hub 71, all the startup ecosystem in the UAE. As an offset program, we did not have that kind of uh, startup investment. However, that's why we are partnering with Airspace Accelerator. So that's where we're starting our journey in terms of us as a Tawazan economic program investing in startups. And that's hopefully the, the good experience that we'll have to share maybe in the future. Perfect, okay. The next one is any thoughts on the current ecosystem for metaverse and blockchain applications in aerospace in the Abu Dhabi and MENA region? That's, that's I was, I was, it will be hard for me to find someone who can answer such a question <laughs> because I'll be very honest, who knows what blockchain will bring to the aerospace industry. It's a very, uh, it's very, I would call it out there kind of idea that if someone hits it right, there's so much disruption that's gonna happen. Same thing with AI. So people can claim that they have a strategy for it and they can say, oh, I'm gonna reach there, I'm gonna do that. But in reality, it's not the case. The reality is that we have an idea, let's test the blockchain technology in terms of doing something in the supply chain, for example. And we see how, where that does that one take us forward. The vision is there, just like AI, nobody can tell you what is the exact target for AI, singularity or whatever it is, but how do I use it in MRO? How do I use it in aerospace? How do I use it in defense and security? So, so it becomes a question. I think that's where we're trying to focus and we're trying to be realistic about our investment and our approach. Even when we started to talk about, about this, and I, I think we had this conversation, men and uh, the whole team of uh, Airspace Accelerated, the, the journey is starting from now, but we don't know how it's gonna end, but at least we know what the next step is gonna look like and we're gonna take it forward. So for me to answer such a very, I would say a visionary kind of question is will be misleading to the company, but <laughs> what we can promise is that uh, those ideas can be looked at, understood, first of all, looked at and tested. That's what we, we can see that. And Abu Dhabi can offer that. The testing, the validation, the requirement building, all of that kind of question is more important than what we want as, as Abu Dhabi because that's an open question, I would call it. Perfect. 
Okay, uh, the next one is um, I saw Tawazan's investment into hydrogen aircrafts in the, U in the UK. Are sustainable mm -hmm. fuel solutions of interest for you? And what, um, sorry, I lost it. And what also are you looking at when it comes to sustainability? Sustainability is one of the major things that we, we are looking at in, in everything that we do. Um, uh, we are, uh, I think, again, the last two years showed us that sustainability is, is the key thing that we need to do as a nation, as a region, as a world, and everything. So with us being also a small nation that give us the agility, but also we need to always look at better ways to sustain ourselves, to sustain the energy side of it, sustain the uh, operational side of things. So sustainment becomes an umbrella of why we do a lot of these things. And how we can do it smarter uh, without the reliance and so many dependency and so forth. So, so that, so it could be energy side of it. It could be also how we operate things. So that's another way that we can look at automation and operation. That's also for me fit within the sustainment uh, side of things. So it is a big thing. It is something that we always focus on. Energy is the driver of any economy growth. So the more you find solution for cheaper energy, uh, more efficient energy, that will be, uh, I would say, an advantage for any nation, for any com country to work on and to develop. So we recognize that as a nation and we continue to develop that. Us as Tawazin also is part of this, uh, this government uh, vision. We also look at what can also we do in this domain. Okay, um, the next one is, thanks Manan Abdullah for this great fireside chat. It's really helpful and interesting. Any idea uh, on who to do we contact from Tawazun or Boeing to discuss more ideas on a number of opportunities? Thank you. I'll leave this question for you, Mena, because we do have this program uh, well set, uh, organized, and how we can handle this. You guys are more experienced in that. So with this program, we are working together with, uh, with, with you. So uh, we are we kind of also trying to make sure that uh, the conversation we have with the startup doesn't have uh, doesn't confuse the startup more than that. So I will leave this question for you, Minna, if you want to answer it. So that will be great. Sure. Okay, perfect. So I think the, the, the easiest and simplest way to start with is uh, contact us through our LinkedIn page, uh, whether it's Aerospace Accelerated or even my personal uh, LinkedIn profile. Uh, this would be the first uh, start. We also have a couple of people who are working or like few team members who are working on the program. You can uh, easily find them on LinkedIn as well. So a message on LinkedIn is all you need to do to start contacting us. Okay, the next one is, can you please share some more insights on IoT and what you as Tawazun do in this and how can you take ideas forward with Tawazun? Uh, if we look at the, if we, if we answer this question from the perspective of Tawazin, it's going to be very limited. And we were looking at these kinds of solutions in terms of how we can do things more efficiently by relying on sensors and Internet of Things, in, uh, whether it's managing of assets or, uh, or sensing remotely things and acting on that we have due to the limitation of the resources, the human resources we have. So that's a limited I would say a vision on how we see it. But if you take that and apply it on all the, uh, I would say the industry, the, the current operation, that will be uh, the game changing uh, idea for us. So we don't want the startup to limit themselves to think about what us as Tawazan is, is trying to do. That could be a startup for whatever IoT is a project that we can look for as a launching pad and so forth. But we want also the startup to look for other uh, application in, uh, of this technology as we go forward in this. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, and then the, I think it might be the last one, but let's see. Uh, we have filed four patents in the AI, AI, AI domain and very specific to the aerospace and defense sector. Would you consider mm -hmm. this or at minimum a working prototype MVP is required? Mm, I think for us, we're starting with startups. Um, it's, not, it's not necessarily for which uh, TR level or which development style, side of it. So each, each opportunity will be looked at separately. 
regardless of how mature or how early it is, uh, the first screening that will happen through the cohort is going to be the uh, the benchmark on how we start from that from those ones. Some of the cohort participants, of course, will be in a different level of maturity. So those, those will be treated differently. But I think also the ideas that are more also developed, that can be looked differently. So we will look at each uh, opportunity differently. We are not, we are agnostic when it comes to uh, the maturity level of, of each technology and how we take it forward from there. Right, yeah. I, I think the, the, the main point is, usually the programs cover the whole spectrum. So like, for example, the Aerospace Accelerated covers the, the, the seed and Series A uh, investments, for example, but then Boeing covers the same the whole spectrum as well as Tawazun. So it depends on what stage uh, the startup is in. Um, okay, uh, the, the other one is, I would appreciate if you keep these fireside chats frequent to keep the community engaged and updated. How frequent do you plan to have such sessions? I think this is something that I can uh, take, Abdullah. Uh, yes, we no, plan I... to have a very, <laughs> uh, a very uh, interactive uh, cohort, uh, and uh, we will keep these uh, fireside chats uh, frequent. Um, what I can advise is stay tuned uh, and watch uh, our uh, Aerospace Accelerated page on LinkedIn and on Twitter and like look for the news and press releases. Um, I know that we have another session uh, next week and more to come on the future sessions. We have a lot of exciting uh, surprises for the, for the startups and the ecosystem in general. So stay tuned. Um, I think this was the last question. Uh, Abdullah, do you have any final thoughts to share? Um, yeah, I think, first of all, I want to wish uh, all the participants the best of luck. Um, I understand how hard it is for someone who have an idea and, and worked hard on it and trying to bring it to life. So uh, I think consistency, understanding, the gap is, the gap is big between uh, the startups and the big uh, manufacturers or the big companies and Airspace Accelerated is bridging that gap for you. So what I saw from you guys as how you do it, that was an exciting thing for you. So uh, I think with patience, with uh, open-mindedness, with uh, the right, I would say, attitude, we will have a success, hopefully, for the startup. I wish all the startups the best of luck, uh, even if they don't get the, uh, the opportunity to work through the uh, Airspace Accelerated. They're more than welcome to continue pursuing their ideas. Uh, so all the best of luck. And thank you, Airspace Accelerate, for uh, having this program done in the UAE. That's something exciting for us. And uh, it's just the beginning of what we're going to do, hopefully, in the future. Thank you, Abdullah. Uh, I think from, for me, uh, I would say that UAE startup ecosystem is a regional and a global uh, leader in innovation. And as you said, the, 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 the mass opportunities that UAE and the whole Meta region offer is just uh, great and amazing. And thank you, Tawazun, for joining us and partnering with us in this cohort. We're excited uh, to see how things will move forward and what type of startups we will onboard uh, for this cohort. Um, I would like to remind everyone that the applications for uh, cohort four are open, so uh, please apply now or um, there is also the Ask Us Anything session happening, I think, next week. Uh, please join this for any questions that you might have. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you, Abdullah, uh, for joining us and thank the audience who attended and thanks the, the team that is supporting us in the background. Thank you all. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good luck.